In this section of the tutorial, we're going to start bringing together the pieces that we've previously worked on individually. The starting point is the file called 5 Portrait Edit 2, which you'll need to load from the project folder, uh, or if you've been following along in sequence, this is the stage we got to at the end of the last tutorial. What we're going to do now is just have one final check to see that everything we've got is um, roughly in the right orientation and depth um, that we're looking for relative to each other. Then we're going to group everything together and we're going to start doing our final set of sculpting on the shapes that we've created using the modeling tools in Aspire. So a couple of things looking at this and comparing it to the original image um, that I want to change. What I'd like to do is get this rough to come up and over the neck here. Um, so I'm going to select that and we'll go ahead and just tile the windows vertically and with that selected go into the modeling tab click on the properties and I'm just going to I want to tilt that up going up here but you can see we've already applied some tilt to this so first I'm going to hit the bake button so that will bake that tilt into it then I can apply a new tilt set the anchor from the bottom to the top part of the collar and I think we'll need very little just to raise that up there so again we're just making sure the depths of everything that we've got at this stage are correct a couple of other things I think I want to change here um, the mouth I want to strengthen up a little um, I don't want it to be overly strong but I know that when I come to start smoothing and sculpting I'm going to lose some of the detail so if we select that component I'm going to make the shape height and uh, I'm just going to make that up to 0 0.02 Okay, so we can see that's become a little more prominent, but we are going to lose some of that detail when we start doing our sculpting. On the nose, which I'll need to select from the list here because it's not one of the foreground components, I think that's a little strong compared to the, some of the shapes around it. So I'm just going to tone that down to 0.25. And then the last thing I'm going to do is tone down some of the shapes we've got for the detailed shapes here, the detailed face shapes and we'll maybe bring those down to height of 0.1 okay so at this point I'm pretty happy with the way it looks and I think I'm ready to start doing the final round of sculpting so I'm going to select to the top component here shift and select the bottom component to grab the whole list I'm going to group these together and then to keep that safe copy of all those individual components I'm going to select the right mouse click and choose duplicate and that is going to build me a copy of those and when I start work on these of course is going to want to bake them together because the next step I've got is to start the actual sculpting process in order to finish this off so I'm not going to uh, cover all the sculpting because there just wouldn't be time um, this certainly could be a process that would t that could easily take several hours um, as you were working the part and in um, continually making changes to it and building things up and removing them and adjusting them but I will show you some of the um, typical techniques we're going to use and then periodically what I'll do is pause um, while I complete the sculpting for that area and then I'll will continue the tutorial uh, subsequent to that pause. So there's no real um, order that you need to work on things at this point in time. It's really just whatever your personal preference is to how you're going to take um, the objects or what you see you want to change. And how I do this is I have on a separate monitor or printed out in front of me the original image, any other reference images I might have of the person I'm working on because they might be useful. And then I would just look and anything that struck me as not being right, I would want to... Um, as I compared the two I'd want to go in and start fixing. At this stage there's an awful lot that isn't right um, between the two images because we haven't done any of the real face manipulation, any of the real shape manipulation to get to that point. So the first thing that sticks out to me here is the nose. So if I zoom in here, the nose and the eyes look quite separate to the rest of the face currently. So what I would do is do a bit of work with the sculpting to adjust the shape of the nose and to start to get it to blend in the face and into the forehead. So if I get, go into the sculpting tools, it's going to warn me that the component needs to be baked, which is fine. That's why we made the safe duplicate. And then what I would do 
is just start to go in here and work on this and I normally like with the sculpting to smooth first as I'm starting to bring these components together and just go in and select sort of kind of a mid mid level strength and I need to look constantly at the image I'm working with to see the areas where this blends in. Now I'm smoothing this part of the nose because that is where it blends into the face but I'm not going to smooth this side of the nose because that is a much harder edge. I may do some very gentle smoothing later in order to kind of give the effect of the angle that that has based on the image but this side is going to be much much smoother. Two things typically need to happen with the nose. One is it needs to come up and, and blend into the forehead. Um, second, it's going to come and blend into the eye here. And third, I'm going to have to get more of the correct shape of the nose based on the image and get it smoothly blending into the face. So once I've done a bit of smoothing, I'm going to come to the smudge tool and start to just look at how I might continue areas of this into the forehead up the top here and going with a smaller diameter just looking how that then flows into the top part of the eye here. Next I realized looking at the image that I need to flatten this side of the nose a lot more and come up to the ridge so I'm going to push in from the lower area here in order to allow me to get more of a flat in there and again respecting other areas where I've got shape here and at this stage I may be um, quite heavily accentuating things that I see in the image and really what I'm doing here is looking to flatten the front part of the nose and get it so that I've got the correct um, shape happening in here but because I've pushed in from the side that's quite strong so I may just push out a little bit again here from the, the part that I've just done it or at this point if I decide I've done too much then I could easily discard my changes and come back and do it that with a lesser strength. Here what I'm going to do is just start now to drag this area out and into the cheek where we've got these two blending together and sometimes you'll need to go from both directions in order to get the shape to blend as you want it to. This can be quite a tricky process if you're not very familiar with the sculpting tools and it can often help, um, I mean most of the time I like to sculpt looking down the, the Z axis but it can often help to come into an ISO view or twiddle the view around in order to get it so that you can see what's happening with the transitions of the shapes like we've got here and allow you to come in and continue to make edits to those. I realise looking at the image that the this part of the nose needs to come out a little further and it'll curl down a little push this up so this is a very iterative process so what I'm going to do is pause the recording and go ahead and just finish all the sculpting around the nose area and blending it up into the top and then we'll continue in a moment Okay, so there you can see we've jumped forward a little bit in time and uh, we've got to the point where I'm reasonably happy with the shape of the nose and how it blends in. To be honest, as we go on, we'll probably do more work on it um, and you will find yourself going back to things because as you sculpt other areas, you'll notice that things now are not quite right with something that previously looked okay. What I'm going to do here is just go ahead and look at a couple of other areas um, Next I want to just focus in on the eyes. So here we can see we made some pretty strong shapes for the eyes and some of these are, are very important. If we look at the original image we can see this piece here is quite prominent, the eyelids are quite prominent and the um, areas under the eyes are reasonably prominent but do smooth and blend into the, the face a lot more than these shapes are currently. So I would go ahead and come in with a smoothing tool and certainly start to smooth those areas under the eye there to make that transition a lot softer and again just keep checking on the image that you've got for reference in the top here I'd smooth a little coming around in this area and this area too now there's a reasonable amount of work will need to be done with these eyes in order to get the uh, flow and the blend and some of the shapes we've got here so again I'm just going to pause 
um, and then I'll continue in a moment so you can see where we've got to with that. Okay, so here we've jumped forward again a little bit in time and you can see I've continued to do some more work on the eyes and just to tease out some of the, the lids and blend it in a little more with the side of the face and the indent here. Essentially, um, the next stage is really to start to look at the face structure. We built up some subtle uh, lumps in the places where we saw shape in the face, but now the only way to really get these to work as they are again in the image is to look at the image and to work on the sculpting. There are going to be places where we'll need to continue things down, where we may need to add a little material or even in some cases remove material. I can see for instance we built up this area around the, the top lip or above the top lip here, but when I look at the image, although that's a raised shape, it's not as rounded in this area here where I've got the cursor. So to change that I may actually go to remove, put in a very low strength, use a reasonable size brush and just go over this a little in order to move it down a bit. This is such a subtle change, I don't know how well you'll see this happening on the screen. Effectively I'm actually removing material but at a very low rate there and that's going to help me to remove some of the roundness on the shape as it comes across the top of the lip there. Next I would come to the strength tool and just do some smudging to blend that in. So very, very subtle transitions we're starting to deal with at this stage, um, really as we try and get the, all the underlying face shapes correct. Next I can see um, the way that the um, area underneath the bottom lip translates and comes out here. This is very prominent again at the moment, so I may also come to the remove tool. Let's up the strength a little so we can see what's happening. And then I may just remove that area there in order to lower it down. And effectively what I'm doing is just flattening that out because of the fact it's currently a rounded shape. Come back to the smudge tool and again just continue to blend and smooth these areas to get the transition to be correct. For the mouth that we made quite prominent, I want to pretty much leave that as is, but I do want to just smooth with a, a small brush, a small cursor, however you want to think of this, just the edge so that I still see the edge of the lips in my model but that I don't see such a hard edge on there because there is much more of a blend and also do the, the same with the area where the lips come together. If I want to add more shape there or I want to define that more the, the area where the lips come together I could use the remove tool with a very small diameter Looking down the z-axis and we could just accentuate that area. We could even um, actually create a shape if we want back in the 2D view in order to do that. It's a little larger the diameter there. Okay, so you can see, you can just up the strength a little, just hardening in that line if we want to do that. This is a very subjective stage and I would continue to work through here and continue to adjust the shapes of the face and these areas that we're going to look at in order to get it to a finished point. What I'm going to do now is pause this, I'm going to do um, that sculpting, have a quick description of it and that will be essentially cover the sculpting for this stage. So we'll go ahead and hit pause now. So once again here we've jumped forward in time to the point where I'm content with the sculpting I've done um, in order to blend together these components. You can see we did a lot of smoothing around the clothes and then really just worked a lot on the face shapes and getting the chin to blend up and through here and the cheeks in order to get the same sort of bone and, and muscle structure that we've got from the original painting really. Built up a little on this cheek here in order to um, get the dimple that we can see here and really just spent uh, a reasonably significant amount of time just tweaking and um, changing it and continuing to work on it based on the original image. So I'm going to hit keep and hit OK. We'll notice um, there things look a little odd 
and that's because I've still got my original group switched on so I'll just switch that off so we've just got our version that we've sculpted here and we'll go ahead and save that and we'll call it 6 and portrait sculpt 1 and that will be the file uh, we'll continue with in the next tutorial where we start to work on sculpting the texture for the portrait. And that concludes this particular section on sculpting together the individual components.